You're watching Newsday TV. Thanks for joining us. I'm Ken Bufa. Drivers are being warned to avoid the roads near Nassau Coliseum tomorrow because of Donald Trump's rally. Now, Nassau officials say many streets will be closed off and traffic will be heavy. The county will also have stepped up security inside and outside of the venue. Every inch of that property in that perimeter and the perimeter is as large as we need to make it. We will make sure that it is safe and it will be swept. Now, there is a long list of banned items for the event, including alcohol, drones, backpacks and more. Gates open at 8 a.m. and doors open at 3 p.m. There will be food trucks there. There will be porta potties there. So if people want the rally experience and they can't actually get inside, uh, I'm told that it'll be a very nice experience. It'll be a fun experience. It'll be like, uh, you know, tailgating for a football game. Now, this comes days after the FBI says Trump was the target of alleged assassination attempt in Florida. And a Lindenhurst man pleaded guilty to killing his wife today. Ryzard Morowski told the judge he intended to kill her after chasing her outside of their home. The 45-year-old stabbed his wife to death in front of their 15-year-old son. Morowski will be sentenced to 22 years in life in prison. Now, Sean Diddy Combs has been indicted on federal sex trafficking charges. The music mogul was arrested last night. The indictment accuses him of sexually abusing women for more than a decade. His attorney spoke to reporters. He's going to fight this with uh, all of his energy and all of his might and the full confidence of his lawyers. And I expect a, a long battle with a good result for Mr. Combs. Now, Combs is being held without bail. And every student at a Long Island high school was given the chance to paint their own parking spots. But school officials say one spot was not allowed. Virginia Huey has a story. A fun tradition of painting seniors' parking spaces at Half Hollow Hills High School West is sparking accusations of censorship and discrimination. We were shocked, furious, and irate. The controversy is over the school official's decision to remove an image that a senior created on her spot. The female student painted a watermelon along with some Arabic writing and a message saying, peace be upon you. The image of a watermelon has become a symbol of solidarity with the Palestinians in Gaza. I was told by my principal that the watermelon was being interpreted as anti-Semitic by anonymous adults. Newsday is not identifying the student, but at a school board meeting, the student, her parents and hundreds of supporters made their feelings clear. I feel deeply offended that the word anti-Semitic was used to describe a piece of my artwork as I would never hold the intent to discriminate against anybody. Suppressing this expression, particularly without any dialogue or explanation, sends a message that students' voices and identities are not valued. It suggests that their expressions, identities, and beliefs can be erased the moment they make someone uncomfortable. District officials say schools have a right to limit speech if an image is judged to be political. For the school district, neutrality is the single most important issue when it comes to limiting speech. Long Islanders are split on the issue. Young girl, whoever did it, they had every right to do it. I think that politics and everything should just be left out, but I do believe that the school should have advised her before doing that. We would appreciate a public apology as it also affects the broader Muslim community. The student and her parents are scheduled to meet with the school principal on Friday. For Newsday TV, I'm Virginia Huey. More than 100 cars are going up for auction in Suffolk this weekend. Police say bids start at 500 bucks for cars, trucks, and motorcycles. A Mercedes-Benz, BMW, and Volkswagen Beetle are just some of the cars on the list. A preview will be held this Thursday and Friday in West Hampton. And experts say Long Island roads are not equipped for the increasing heavy rains. Alfonso Castillo has a story you'll see only in Newsday. Living on an island on the Atlantic coast, Nassau and Suffolk residents may be used to dealing with some flooding during storms, but there's no getting used to scenes like this one. Last month's rainstorms were so severe that they completely washed away this road here in Stony Brook Village. Experts say it is a testament to Long Island's infrastructure not being built to withstand the kind of severe weather we've been having, and the worst may be yet to come. It's just overwhelming. While no amount of preparation could have left Long Island roadways unscathed from the nearly 10 inches of rain that fell during the August storm, Mark Herbst of the Long Island Contractors Association 
believes better maintenance of decades old drainage systems could have lessened the blow. Particularly here on Long Island, when we're surrounded by water, if you don't take care of the culverts and the underground systems, the drainage systems, and make sure that everything's clear and working properly, then you're going to run into these kinds of issues. A 2020 report put together by Herp's group warned of 70-year-old catch basins that are well beyond their useful life and leaching basins along the Northern State Parkway that have not been located or inspected in decades. At the same time that Long Island's roadways are getting older, its weather is getting more extreme, said Stony Brook climate scientist Kevin Reed. If you look at the historical record, if you look at weather data, rainfall on Long Island and all across the state of New York has changed. Uh, annual average rainfall in New York as a whole has increased anywhere from 10 to 20 percent over the last 120 years, and most of that change has actually happened in the last few decades. With the climate changing, Reed says so too must public officials approach to building and maintaining Long Island roadways. We don't have what the city has, which is different ways to take care of excess water. Um, we have a lot of hodgepodge ways of doing that on Long Island. So coming up with a more coherent plan um, is something that we could really strive for. And Long Island isn't out of the woods yet. Climatologists say we are only now in the peak of hurricane season, which is set to last through the end of November. In Stony Brook, for News ATV, I'm Alfonso Castillo. Now to read more about this story, go to Newsday.com, click Get More, below the Newsday TV video box. A local nonprofit is keeping the memory of a Dix Hills child alive by helping other families struggling with childhood cancer. Sherry Einhorn has a story you'll see only in Newsday. My corner is She fought. She fought like hell. Daniela Conti had just started kindergarten in a new school, in a new town, in a new home. The little girl from Dix Hills bravely battled a rare and aggressive cancer that came back four times. That goes to show you what kind of tough cookie my daughter was. There were four grueling years of doctors, hospitals, procedures, treatments, and remission from the rhabdomyer sarcoma. You're in a bubble and you're like, you're just surviving. You're in a bubble, you know, you're like, you're up, you, you go. You tell them, yes, you know, we're here, we'll do this, we'll do that. You know, you just trust the doctors. They always had a plan. You trust my daughter's life was in their hands. Daniela passed away in March 2020. You know, you think to yourself and it's like, why? How? There are no explanations. I will never get those answers. A few months after Daniela's death, her family started a not-for-profit foundation in her memory. They raise money to help families struggling financially while their children are battling cancer. They also fund research into this rare cancer and drugs to treat it. During Childhood Cancer Awareness Month, 30 schools across Suffolk County are participating in the foundation's second annual Going Gold Shoelace campaign, including... Me. We raised over $15,000 in our first year. Just from the shoelaces? Just from the shoelaces. Wow. And that went to help over 30 families in the local community with mortgage, rent, transportation, child care. Helping others. It's a mission Katia Conti says gives her daughter a voice. <laughs> it, it's her. She's giving me the strength. I hear her in my head sometimes. And I hear her say, Mommy, go out there. Go out there so that this doesn't have to happen to somebody else. I'm not tired. I'm Shari Einhorn for Newsday TV. Now to read more exclusive stories like this one, go to Newsday.com, click Get More, below the Newsday TV video box. All right, now let's take a look at your cloudy Long Island weather. And the good weather is still with us for the most part, but the clouds are moving in. You can see tonight, mostly cloudy skies with temps near the 60s. Tomorrow, we are near the mid 70s. Taking a closer look, you can see clouds pretty much all day long. And when it comes to the seven day forecast, well, the rain will be moving in Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and for the first day of fall, at least it'll look dry. Long Island weather is brought to you by PTRC. You're watching Newsday TV. I'm Ken Bufa. Thank you so much for joining us.